Howdy, 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 everybody, and welcome to the Sneak Competition Design Truck Series for the Primary Jeep 200. We're here live at Daytona International Speedway here on Racecraft TV. I'm Austin Knight. I am joined by Tyler Vickery, and we're here in qualifying right now. And Tyler, say hello to, the, to everybody out there, and uh, how, you, how we doing? How we doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. It's uh, going to be a fun one. Uh, at least I can say this is my home track. Uh, I'll probably be about, uh, actually thinking about it tomorrow. I'll be uh, five minutes away from the track tomorrow. So it's going to be fun. I get to see some virtual racing tonight. I, I, it's better. It's much better than what we're getting uh, ver in real life in some series. I know uh, one series is a <laughs> absolutely boring to watch right now. And I'm just watching all the lower series right now, Formula One. Uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah uh, uh, somewhat in agreement with you. <laughs> <laughs> GG Mercedes, congrats on the win. I know the race hasn't even qualified yet. We're in qualification right. right now. Speaking of qualifying, Dustin Scruggs is sitting up there on provisional pole. We are watching him do a few laps right now as we're just watching a few other cars. We're looking at Chip Turner right now. And Chip's just starting his qualification lap, and that is a beautiful car he's running. Yeah, oh yeah, I love it. Uh, even the even on the back is perfect. Really nice, clean paint scheme. Looks like he's actually getting ready to finish his second lap, I believe, too. Looks. I think it's good. His lap. No, no, yeah, that is finishing. Mm -hmm. And Chip Turner comes across the line in fifth place. Oof. Then the oh, well, he's the farthest up Toyota. Currently, Casey Hearing just came across. He's sitting in ninth place right now. Uh, car that's just starting his flying lap is Raul Menza in the 37 car. And you don't see a lot of baby blue paint schemes. No, um, not really. And it's almost right now, I went and took a quick look at the manufacturer's list. Um, it looks like it's Xfinity all over again, but instead of it being the Fords not being big, uh, it's the Toyotas. Oh, and Stephen Thomas jumps into first Ooh. place. And that was odd, because that was his outlap where he did that from. That is a little scary. <laughs> well, if that was his outlap and he went pole with a 52-2-5, let's ride on board with him and see what he's going to do on this lap. And that Toyota, ooh, those Toyota well, boys, they know how to make something go. Oof. Yep, he's already uh, went purple in sector one as well. That's uh, a little scary. Guy is hitting up to 170 miles an hour through that turn. Through the trial where they go, he's just hugging that yellow line, comes across the line, and he is exactly the same time. Wow. Actually, no, he went slower that lap. I had tenth of a second as well and it, it was all of sector two he was just a little slower in sector two still tenth of a second difference my goodness now here's nathan rog we saw him on the cup series tuesday night he hasn't set a time yet as he is coming out on track and uh oh well, i i it, it's very fun looking at these cars the 91 chevy that Blue Alpine Starred cars. I just love this layout, this paint, these paints these guys have. Oh, yeah. Some of the paint schemes I've seen are really nice. Crossing the line now. It's actually, his start of his yeah, flyer. He's lap starting too. it out. He's hugging that yellow line the entire time. Now, unlike the Cup guys, where they run off the very top for their outlap, but then swing to the bottom on their fast lap. Nathan is just staying down there. So we ride on board in our gyro cam, uh, sitting as a good old passenger, trying not to lose his lunch as we ride on board with Nathan. Or dinner, since we're underneath the lights. Yeah. I'm actually curious. Does he have damage on that right front? Oh, yeah. And that looks like he's got some damage on his right front already on that on that warm-up lap. It looks like he does, yeah. 
the front right is just a bit beat up right there. And that's that's gonna hurt him qualifying. Yeah, it looks like he just Ooh. tapped the wall. Uh, and I just looked at the back of his car, and I think that says "yee yee." <laughs> oh no. And he slowed up a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah it like does it. say "yee yee" on there, and yeah, he's got damage, and he's gonna. That's a very unfortunate qualifying for him. Yeah, really unfortunate. As and, uh, am I seeing this right down, uh, further down to 23rd place? Uh, 23rd, Dan Hagen. One minute, one. Well, somebody wanted to start last. <laughs> Hey, I don't. Bl I, I kind of don't blame him. Uh, I mean, who I knows was talking what to with a, I was there. talking with a few drivers uh, before this race, and they were saying, "Hey, it's three stages. I'm just going for that win. I don't care about the stage one, stage two. They just cause chaos." And I was totally in agreement with him. And yeah. well, what he what he ended up doing is he's like, "Yeah, I was gonna stay, start near the back and uh, work my way up the front to stage three and." That's the way to go, and with this stage racing system, it, it kind of destroys that uh, full-on race perception if this entire thing goes green, but you know it being Daytona, it rarely ever goes green, especially uh, when you got yeah. a bunch of guys just having a good old time. Yeah, I can agree with that 100%. Um, yeah, it's, it's Daytona. There's bound to be... Any kind of little mistake, as Derek Mullins, as we're watching him, he's just put in a 12th place uh, qualifying effort there for his second lap. Uh, but, yeah, it's... I, I If we manage to go green the entire run, the entire race, I will be shocked. Because, um, <laughs> I mean, watching the real-life watching the real life guys, I mean, they had mess. So, it, it's bound to happen. Man, it's bound to happen, but we're bound to get a few trucks out there uh, very soon as qualifying is over here for the Sneed Competition Design Series Primary Jeep 200. And uh, let's get a full-on uh, title change of here right there. There it goes. And uh, let's just, you know, let, let's take a look here because... Everything is just beautiful at night. Daytona just looks absolutely wonderful at night. And let's bring up our grid. Starting up on pole position on the outside, it is Stephen Thomas with Mark Truxall right beside him. Right Tucker in the second row, followed by Dustin Scruggs. Clinton Castleberry, Tyler Daniels, Michael McKinnon, Chip Turner, Chris Cinnamon, Jonathan Munda, Keith Bradley, Derek Mullins in 12th place. They're followed by Taylor Peacock, Steve Williams, Andrew Hurley, Eric Zimmerman, Casey Herring, Justin Lupkin, Tony Smith, Jason Kiefer, Raul Menza, TJ Wood, Nathan Rogg, and Dan Hagen um, in that 39. He was the last one to set a time. And they were followed by Tyler Dittmer in that beautiful Barstool sports car. And Brennan Bullock at the end of the grid. And Tyler is actually not in the grid right now. But we're all gridded up and getting ready to go racing here on Racecraft TV. And I, I, I like to keep it a little bit of, a little bit of a lighter tone here in the production booth. So, uh, you know, any betters out there in the audience? <laughs> Who you got your money on? Uh, shoot. Me? Um, I'd have to go with, uh, even though I haven't really seen these guys a lot, I'm gonna have to take my chances on, uh, on Truxall. I think Truxall might have a chance here, especially being on the outside. If he just plays his card safe, lets him, let some people give some push, and even if he falls back a little, uh, takes a chance on saving some fuel and, and everything, especially with some of the strategies, I, th I think Mark Truxall will have an opportunity to win this race. Well, I'm not supposed to be biased because I'm controlling the show, so I'm not going to express my opinion. <laughs> and I saved myself that trouble, but hey, you're, you're a guest here, so you have fun. 
<laughs> always, right? Me always being a prankster. <laughs> Isn't that typical, though? Me being a prankster? Yes, it is absolutely <laughs> typical. Haven't you done commentary before? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we've uh, we've had some other fun. <laughs> yeah, especially on fun. track uh, when you turned me around and then I repaid the favor. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Gosh. That was a hilarious moment, by the way. I was so <laughs> mad. <laughs> well, I kind of don't blame you there especially after that happened and i'm like oh knowing austin uh wait for it knowing austin <laughs> wait for it bam <laughs> it's like hi hi make sure you have radio turned off whatever <laughs> um, yeah. and we do have radio turned uh, off so we don't have to worry about any unfortunate moments and people getting mad with each other yeah. but 80 laps here at daytona Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys are having a good time. Rhett Tucker, after winning in the Cup Series, is starting up there in fourth. That 99, he's looking for we're to another great start. So the pace truck pulls off. Ladies and gentlemen, the heartbeats are rising because it's green, green, green here at Daytona for the Steam Cup Design Truck Series Primary Jeep 200. So far, clean start by everyone. Uh, still two by two all the way up in front. 99 of Rhett Tucker giving Steve Thomas a little bit of push there, trying to get him up to where they can get single file. It's a very clean start for everybody. And Rhett Tucker already looked for that lead. He swings to the outside. Side by side, they go down the Daytona super stretch. And he's side by side with that 23. Rhett Tucker getting a good push from the cars behind him. That bottom lane being... Push down low. Rhett Tucker takes the lead, but he's going to stay up high, and he's just holding that middle lane. And the five's looking around the outside. The five of Mark Truxall, your pick, is going side by side for the lead once more. Interesting and, move there, too. Well, Sorry to jump in, but that was an interesting move. Well, it's Truxall leading the first lap here of the, tr of the primary Jeep 200. Here at Daytona, Truxall and Tucker going to go side by side for turn two. And I feel like we're already seeing this race start off, but what's happened at the back? There's a giant group that's just fallen back from this main group. Yeah, uh, way farther back. Looks like uh, Eric Zimmerman's already three and a half behind, Justin Bumpkin. A lot of trucks further back just probably buying their time but if they lose that if they lose that draft they're they're toast yeah and i think they have lost that draft uh i know the draft is very powerful in these trucks because it's basically a box on wheels not to offend yeah. uh, anyone who has a truck i own a truck and uh <laughs> it is a box on wheels but it's still more aerodynamic than a kia soul fair enough and there goes a potential sponsorship out the window <laughs> <laughs> And Truxell getting a little bit of work from the 11 on him. The 11 looking around that outside and almost got into the bumper. Look at these cars just fanning out, going side by side down the back stretch. And look at that car down the inside. That is Steven Thomas. He's side by side. And Rhett Tucker is out there on top. And Steven Thomas is down there on the inside. And he takes the lead. Yeah, these guys are throwing haymakers after haymakers, but it's just all of the help of the push. Here goes the five, giving it a big push to Rhett Tucker to lead that lap. Rhett Tucker's just holding that middle line, and then here comes Steve Thomas just sliding up a bit, trying to use that side draft, because side draft here is uh, is more up most importance, especially with these trucks. Yeah, the side drafting is insane. Uh, it's, you don't notice that side draft is usually a thing because the cup cars are... Kind of wonky in a way, but looks like that rear group got back with this main group after a big checkup on the tri hole. Which is a good thing. I mean, granted, there are still a few car, few trucks a little bit out of line, but it looks like those guys way back in 20th and everything, they've actually yeah, been able back to here. make themselves back up. So great job by them. Let's uh, take a look at how warm it is. It's 72 degrees out there on track, 71 degrees in the air. It's a beautiful night here in Daytona, Florida. 
10 mile per hour winds coming in from the northeast. So, it's coming right off the ocean. Oh, and the five oh, gets so loose mid corner. That would have been uh, disastrous. Oh my. A disastrous is a light term. These guys are going, well, one, two, three. It looks like they're trying to go four wide right there. But they're three wide mid corner. Look who's out there on that I racing car. The 92 swings it around the outside of one, but two cars. Keith Bradley is just out there on his own, and he's in the wall. Oh, he's scraping it again, but at that side, whoa, as he comes back right in front of the 93 of Tyler Daniels. Daniels had a slam on the brakes there not to hit him, and that could have been, that would have been really bad for both of them, and as well as half of the field behind. Uh, 92, though, he's staying up there, but with that scrape in the wall, is that going to give him a little bit of damage? But six laps in here, we're going pretty clean. The 92 already looking on the outside once more as we head back down this back straight here at Daytona. Still Tucker, still trucks all, and Tucker, but they're going three wide once more again. It's the 92 of Keith Bradley. And the 11 and the five gets turned around. Oh, oh it's a massive crap. Oh, it's a soup kitchen. That, that, is, that, the oh, entire, that, that is, is the entire field. No. <laughs> oh, my gosh. They're still wrecking. <laughs> well. That's a first. Uh, dun, dun. <laughs> uh, dun, dun. Well, I, I think I think uh, I, I, I that's think it's got to be clip. <laughs> Everyone um. but the 11 of Dustin Scruggs. No, the 11 started that, that. the 11 started that crash. Oh, my gosh. Okay, let's oh, see who makes it. it. Yeah. He everyone, everyone, <laughs> everyone, 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 <laughs> oh, no way, oh, everyone wow. just got collected, I know it's not wow. professional to be laughing at this, it's just, that's the that, one I think I feel bad for is when they get caught up in something like that. Wait, and the 41, just, the 41. Does the 41 fun. get hit? Yeah, the 41 gets hit. Okay. Oh, uh, man. What about the 4? The 4's got a good... No, the 4 in the back. We have that Hooters card. Does the Hooters it's card gotta, get through yeah. there? He might have. What about the light blue car? Light blue truck? He was full, full on brakes. He might have oh, been able to serve, oh, save it. Oh, oh, oh. I think the Hooters There's, car made it through. Yeah, the Ho Hooters car looked like he might have made it through, as well as a few others. All right. I think there was, like, the light blue, but, oh, my. Oh, jeez. That's a wow. junkyard now. Okay, oh let's, watch that, let's watch that back at full speed uh, from the blimp. Just. Oh. Red Tucker went up in the air and got thrown for a loop. So it looks like uh, three cars made it through there without getting hit. Yeah, the um, red car. Like oh, oh, two cars. Oh, that is. You just hate to see that. God. You, you think he yeah. got through there? The next thing you know, getting backed and in by another car. But absolutely. Oh. Let's get oh. back live. Uh, what just happened? <laughs> So, uh, Dustin Scruggs is our leader right now, and he does that damage on that front nose. And the cars that w didn't go into the pits were Dane Hagen, Raul Menza, Jonathan Munda, Eric Zimmerman, who has damage in that buddy project car, and Dustin Scruggs. Wow. My goodness. That. Wow. That's all I got to say is wow. Yeah, there are fast repairs, but if you just ride on board the nose, you can see that number 11 car has a lot of damage, and I think he's going to go to the pits right now when the pits actually opened up for him. I just didn't want that penalty. Yeah. Nope, he's staying out. No, he's not. All right. Wow. We're all staying out. Uh, Ooh, man. I'm going to ride on board of these guys. Uh, yeah, Derek Mullins, he does have damage a little bit, it looks like. Uh, 
that actually oh, the NASA, sucks. the poor NASA car, the NASA truck's got some damage. I just noticed 39. Yeah, Dane Hagen. So. Yeah, I yeah, look, he got hit hard in the rear, but uh, the nose looks fine, but that rear is kinked up right there. Question is, though, do these guys get a fast repair? They do. They do have fast repairs. Well, a lot of these trucks are already opting in on fast repairs. Uh, some of them not. Like, they're in the 94, just a little bit of side damage after getting backed into. It looks pretty clean, though, but, yeah, no, I feel bad for that 94. Just when he thinks he makes it through, and then he gets backed, in, uh, backed into in the side and gets T-boned t -boned in the left in the left side of the truck that was by one of the other trucks backing up trying to get back on back straight and just slammed into him yeah well if fast repairs were used uh it's a long race left for them and uh after trying to wrap our minds on who didn't die there uh which i think was most of the field did oh. uh this race is in the air <laughs> yeah, it, it um, just like Rhett Tucker was. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh goodness. Oh, jeez. I'm, I'm. My head is still spinning around. I, I can't believe that. Well, get ready to get spun right round again because the pace truck is off, and the Sneed Competition Design Truck Series Primary Jeep.com 200 is back green, and it's a dog of a start for the 94 of Eric Zimmerman. Really bad start as well as he loses three positions right off the bat. Yeah, four. Four now. Five. Boy. Six. What is happening? Horsepower. Pedal. Go. Oh, shit. I wonder. 37 can be out of the way. Uh, he might have yeah. a lot of engine damage and he's just not realizing it, but it's an absolute slow fest right there. As we looked on the back straight, that buddy project car is just dropping down the field right now. And oh, no. But it's side by side, the Alpine star of Nathan Rog looking around the outside going for the lead. But it's the 11 of Dustin Scruggs who has that damage. Well, I should say everyone has a damaged car right now. Uh, 10 laps in out of 80 here for the primaryjeep.com 200. But the cars that don't have damage, uh, I expect the four car, Tyler Dittmer, to be a car to watch out for to take that lead very soon. Yeah, I agree with you there. I mean, it's just with how the arrow is. I mean, the truck's really clean. Looks like the 92 used his fast repair, so he's nice and clean as well. But, I mean, like, you see some of these trucks on the inside. The 41's got a lot of damage. I mean, oh, boy. It's interesting seeing, seeing, seeing some of these trucks able to still be up to speed. Yeah, we know Bradley. He's very aggressive. He'll make it go three wide whenever he wants to. So, Bradley and uh, Tyler... I expect these two to uh, try to make some moves up here. It looks like Bradley's already a... Uh, actually, the 92 of... Uh, Bradley's actually a lap down. Oh, wow. The 92 of Bradley is actually a lap down right here. Oh, he had a toe there or something. Yeah, wow, he... that... So we got some lap scars in this lead pack. And we still got to come to the stage caution, too, I believe, as well. Yeah, he's going for that lucky dog position. So, the 92 is a lap down, and he's just pushing the NASA car of Dane Hagen uh, out into the lead right now. But Dane, with that massive parachute of a rear end, is not helping him at all. It would be best if the four was let around him and let into the lead. You gotta time that move out right. Yeah, you wanna time it right so that you can be able to keep, just so that the 39 can stay in the pack, but it's very difficult as well. When, I mean, you got a lot of trucks damaged, dude. Even trying to time it's very difficult. Uh, you gotta watch out for what the 92 is doing as well. Uh, and we see the four drop down the inside. He doesn't wanna be behind Bradley. He knows that 39 is a dog of a car. And the 92 is just very aggressive. But here comes the four. He doesn't want to wait anymore. The 39's in the lead. He's got Bradley in his sights. He's going to lock bumpers up with him. And Bradley, oh, he wanted to go down low. And Bradley blocks the four. 
And like you were calling earlier, now the 92 and the 4 who have one of some of the cleanest trucks right now, they're going to try to work their ways. They got three wide from the back. Ooh. The 16, 99, and 11. Rhett Tuck around the outside. And 92. Rhett Tucker's lap down as well. Ooh, this is going to get interesting. Yeah, Rhett Tucker, I think, was forcibly towed back after he left the Astronosphere and uh, went spinning around faster than the dreidel. Agree. Oh, uh, right now, the 992 keeps Bradley back on the lead lap now. Got it back the hard way, so now if a caution comes out now, he'll at least be on the lead lap and not have to worry about the lucky dog. Yeah, but you, you just can't count on caution sometimes in NASCAR. You gotta shoot tooth and nail, and he does have the stages to look forward to, and it, it's just a short ways away, but you still gotta look forward to it, and work your way for him yeah and now he's just gotta play it patient here be up front just keep the leaders behind because this be really unfortunate here if the 99 pushes just ahead of the 92 because especially with uh brett tucker knowing he's a lap down he's got to realize if i put in strategy here too 92 is a lap down red's a lap down too yeah, he doesn't here comes Rhett. Four. Rhett's making it three wide, but oh. the four blocked him right there. And Rhett going to go three wide. He's going to go around the outside, and that's held up that outside line a lot. These guys got to put their heads together and work together, especially if they want Rhett Tucker to be on the lead lap. And this Rhett's fight for the lucky dog is going insane. And look at Rhett Tucker. He's diving his way down to the bottom of that top line. has absolutely just been destroyed, and Tyler Dittmer is behind so many cars but he's still in fourth place and that just shows how many lap cars are in front of him fighting back for that lead lap the 97 of log he's in third place and here comes tyler looking for that third place spot but there's a big checkup for the 39 and here comes Rhett tucker around the outside yep and so that's the whole thing with Rhett. Rhett's got to realize too he gets if he pushes uh, Nathan Rogue the ninety or the yeah the ninety one ahead. Well, all three of, of, I must uh, say all three of these cars we're watching are a lap down in the lead. Oh boy! And they're going oh, three, three wide, wide for the lucky dog. Wet Tucker through the middle. Well, oh, okay, so we got two well lead lap cars officially now since they've got them back the hard way in front of the two leader boy. Well, this has got interesting. It is, but I must say, they are not actually the first cars a lap down. You would know who is. Well, well actually, I mean, at least, they, they actually, technically are. They're on the lead lap. Yeah, they, they, they are, are on the lead, lead lap. lap now. And they won't Mark get. Russell. I don't think they will the get run. the lucky dog. No. If they, so this is kind of a cat and mouse game because Mark Truxel in the five, he's fur he's at least another lap behind as well, so Oh boy. Thirty nine got a washed up a little there. Almost almost Tucker. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I think the car that is on their lap but is just a bit ahead of him, he's the last one there is actually Chris Cinnamon. my timing it's saying that he's not even on the lead lap anymore he's only registered eight laps currently yeah so that Chris might, Cinnamon might... might be the first car oh, a lap down oh, okay then. yeah as my timing now updates yeah you're right actually very interesting yeah, so these guys up here aren't even fighting for position <laughs> They're just fighting for it, and it's going absolutely nutty up front. And the real car at first is Dane Hagen in that NASA car. Oh, this is going to be really hilarious, too. But, I mean, at least the, the, on the bright side, though, looking at it, Keith Bradley will be back on the lead lap. However, if Keith Bradley gets lapped, Chris Cinnamon loses out on Lucky Dog. How's that for a coincidence? Man, my brain hurts. This is a Friday night. I'm not supposed to be thinking right now. I graduated from college. I didn't know I was going to continue doing math equations. Jeez. <laughs> I'm walking five. 
<laughs> just a five. It's coming out of pit road, too, so he was hanging on the apron there as well. Yeah, some of these guys are having damage, but let me tell you, it's green and white checkered flag right now as it's the last lap of stage one. The 39, Elm's getting into the 37, 97, and the race leader, the battle for the lead is between Nathan Rogg in that 97 Alpine Star car around the outside. He's got a car length ahead of the 39, but here comes Dane Hagen down onto the inside. Side by side, they go. The rocket boosters of the NASA car, even with that massive rear end damage. It's a tractor show right now, as they're both having drafting partners and they're pushing their way up into the lead. Nathan Rogg has the lead up around the outside of that inside line now. He's being led by the 92 ahead of him. Dan Hagen retakes the lead. He's got a car link. He's got two car links. It's a drag race down into the tribal. Taking stage number one is going to be Dane Hagen. And he turns to 92. And there's a bunch of crash behind him. Oh, no. Justin Lumpkin was in there. That car is destroyed. Oh, that's like saying thank you for your help. Now I'm gonna turn you. Uh, that was a mobster <laughs> move by Nathan. Uh, and he, he, oh, man. he's taking the Sorry. lead, and he's taking the uh, stage win. But where is he gone? I don't know. He's completely oh, dropped man. off my timing screen. He has actually. Yeah, I'm noticing that too. Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. here's Dane. Yeah, well, he... he's taking the stage win, but he, he he's got he's got to make up some ground now. I I think I think the moment has gone on to him, but for a second caution in a row, that that was kind of silly. Yeah. Oh man, that was uh, he, like that was the, not he was following good... him for the stage win. He helped him, and then he just turned then, him. Just yeah. Oh man, that was. Uh... Well, something you would not expect. I, I think there's something being said in, uh, and before we watch him murder in full screen and, uh, well, get reported for showing that on YouTube, let's go <laughs> for a side by side with a little bit of an ad break. Can you see it? It's right there. Hidden behind an assortment of vibrant colors and corporate branding schemes. Look closer. Past the nearly 200 tons of handmade American steel. And beyond the highest quality, custom designed electrical components and systems in the industry. Deeper still, to the very core. That's where you'll find it. The heart of NRE. Heart is what makes us who we are. Heart is why NRE products and services are made with more. More precision. More grit and more passion. We're the largest independent supplier of locomotives, parts, and components on the planet. Vertically integrated and strategically positioned for multiple domestic and international facilities. Our capacity and efficiency are simply unmatched. Fast and worth ethic and sealed with a calloused handshake. We design real solutions for real-world challenges. Whether we're leading the charge on clean emission solutions or integrating the latest performance-enhancing technology into virtually any locomotive platform, we court to delivery and ship from stock to offer the most flexible and comprehensive work scope throughout our global reach. Our customers call it a return on investment. 
We call it the return of North American pride. Do you see it now? It's there. A raging fire that burns inside each and every designer, welder, engineer, and NRE team member. Heart is our anthem. Passion is our fuel. They drive us towards success, push us beyond boundaries, and they guide us to you. Heart is what moves us forward. And we are back live for the Sneed Competition Design Truck Series Primary Jeep 200, or as we should call it, the Sneed Competition uh, Demo Derby uh, Zoomerama 200. <laughs> uh, every field has been crashed. We got that. Twice. At least once. <laughs> Oh, we, boy. And we were on the radio, uh, listening to a few of these drivers, and, uh, while we were in side by side, just wondering what the heck's happening. Um, the use of fast repairs, I think, has just gone away, and so it's a very permanent race right now. And this is something to look forward to, but currently out front, it's Nathan Rock and Michael McKinnon in the NASA car up there, so, uh, I'm going to say this. If Michael wins this race, there's going to be a lot of, uh, <laughs> of fingers pointed. <laughs> it's just like, hey, wait a minute. Something doesn't seem right here. Yeah. Uh, especially when everyone's like, oh, he can be further back at the pack. And then all of a sudden this happens as pace cars uh, turning away and green flag is underway. And... What a jump. Yep. Nathan just takes off and uh, Michael McKinnon just struggling to get the uh, the hammer down. Yeah, Michael just I think he's looking for a gap down low so he just avoids any further incident up there. He does have a clean car, but knowing Michael, he likes to keep it clean. I don't blame him, especially after two massive wrecks. Uh, Look at this field. It's in completely in thinned stage. out. Boy. Yeah. Never would I have expected that. We got a car going very low underneath the yellow line, and everyone in this pack, except for a few, has a damaged car. Oh my goodness, unbelievable. We're back racing the 21, the 97 having a good run down low. The 23 of Steven Thomas is on the bottom row, and Nate, Michael, is still up there on that upper row and Michael's getting a good run around the outside. He just needs that 16 of Tony Smith right behind him to just lock bumpers with him. But the 16's just a little bit wobbling around right there. Yeah, it just lo looks like probably a little bit of handling issue, um, especially with some of the damage and stuff. But yeah, he should be okay though, um, especially in the long run. But we'll see what happens if that handling does get worse because of that damage. Indeed, but these two guys up front are shuffling spots all over the place for the lead once more as we begin stage two. 20 more laps of action here for the Sneed Competition Design Truck Series Primary Jeep.com 200 here at Daytona. What a season opener already it is. Yeah, having a big wreck already, a big wreck in the first stage, well, two big wrecks at the first stage one about midway through and then the second one happening just near the end That's dane hagan uh, dane hagan in pit road pit now lane. well we didn't see him take a drop into the pit lane during the caution so i think his car must have gave out on him and uh showing some bad numbers yeah looks like uh looks like he might need a fast repair now and he'll be using it this time after he, uh if he has incident, one. If he has it. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, yeah, Dane Hagen, stage one winner. Uh, controversy around him after what happened after the line, after he uh, pushed the car in front of him to the lucky dog position. 
and then turn him. That was more actually putting pushing him to the lead lap, and then, or and then that happening because yeah. that car that truck was the just got on the lead lap the hard way and then losing it in an instant. It, it's like hi, here's a puppy. Okay, feed it to the, feed it to the snake. Yep. <laughs> I don't know who feeds dogs to snakes, but uh, if you do that, not fun. Not cool. Oh, this is like one of those chihuahua things. Those things are the devil. <laughs> Always try to bite my You got a, I saw a uh, slow truck uh, further ahead. I believe uh, that was I'm an not Irish sure who truck. That, I'm not sure who that is. Uh, we'll it see him like very soon because this pack of this these guys are just moving up so fast. And, oh, there he yep. is. That's the uh, oh, that 92. Was the, uh, yep. uh, that's the 92. Keith Bradley, who was he was the one that was turned. He was the blaster that was turned by uh, by Dane. I believe. You no, know, if it, if we sure. if we see that NASCAR and him involved in an incident, I will not be surprised. Yeah, I 100% agree. Yep. Let them fight it out. Go on, fist fight. But uh, in the lead, it's Michael McKinnon, all by Nathan Rock, Tony Smith, Courtney Casper, and Casey Herring are top five. And everyone in this top five, except for Quentin Castleberry, started outside the top five. Unbelievable. And that's just from a massive wreck that happened. Lap Early six. on in stage one, yeah, oh my goodness, lap six, and then just the entire field got caught up in it, and then that shuffled everything around. I mean, the, the pole sitter is, I believe, way down in seventh currently. I mean, he's trying to work his way back, but boy, oh boy. Yeah, he's on the GoPro car right here. He's holding down that bottom line right behind the 21 of Clinton Castleberry. So he's up there and he's still in contention, but oh, it's been a very up and down and day for everybody here. And as we're looking at our biggest mover, that would be Nathan Rogg in the 91. Uh, I would say he has the most up and down day because he's up 20 spots. Unbelievable. He's just had some really good luck. Uh, I mean, granted, I. Wasn't he involved in that effort? No, he he avoided the uh, the wreck on state on lap six, I believe. He was one of those trucks that made it through on one of um, three? lap six, I believe so. The only thing holding so. him back, I would say, would be the uh, connect small connection problems. But he does have a little bit of damage. Yeah, and I believe that little damage was from uh, was from the. Uh, stage one and race ending because uh, I believe he had a little bit of rear end contact from that from when that stage one ended um, trying to avoid the wrecks and in, uh, in front of him well it's definitely a much cleaner stage two as we have eight laps remaining here in Daytona for stage two 20 lap stages and then it's a 40 lap race to the end and there is definitely going to be a lot of pit stop strategy going on in there because that is just over the pit stop line. So if it stays green, it's going to be a mad dash for fuel at the end of this race. Oh, without a doubt, and especially woo. Uh, that was McKinnon. A little loose there. Yeah, McKinnon Boy. went up there. He was looking for that outside lane as the 9 and the 16 died down low. Tony Smith and Casey Herring taking the lead pair. Could have been really disastrous the way they were sliding up. Almost was expecting one of them to scrape the wall for a minute. Yeah, Nathan Rog, that bottom line is being an absolute train, and they're getting pushed straight into the lead. A little bit of squirreliness in the back, but you see that Irwin car. Ooh, that might cause a little bit of problems. That's a 64 of TJ Wood. Let's see if everyone gets past him cleanly. Tugging that outside wall. And ooh, watch that exit. <laughs> yeah, he's made it to the back of there very easily. And up front, it's very nicely. And in the middle of the pack, there are almost three wide at one point. 
boy, it's gonna be... They're trying to play it safe, at the same time they're trying to be a little aggressive, knowing the stage is pretty close here to ending. Yep. Almost five laps to go here at Daytona for the end of stage two. Tony Smith leads the field, followed by Casey Herring, Michael McKinnon, Nathan Rock, and Tyler Daniels. Um, in that 93, your current top five. Yeah, surprised with how the nine's able to keep up. I mean, that nine, granted, he's in a really good um, draft right now, but he's got a lot of uh, rear end. That, that truck should be acting like a parachute if he tries to pop out of line. That's just why he's buried in there. Oh, I, I don't know if he's listening to this broadcast because he just had a look outside, but that might just be uh, to cool down his engine. But just look how slow he is in the corner compared to Nathan Rogg, who is having a great run up the inside. But look who is on the outside. Hello, it's Michael McKinnon. Michael McKinnon making his way back after uh, some unfortunate circumstances earlier. Not getting the run though that he wants. And yeah, that's the 93's not helping him at all. Yeah, oh boy, the 93 and Tyler Daniels. That was he was on the outside, and then he was looking Ooh. down to the inside. But he's having trouble to stay behind the 13. That could have been scary. Oh, and he's sideways. checked up again. Oh, that car is so Three unstable. Yep. Oh boy, 47 barely capped three. That could have been. That's Chris a Cinnamon. Lot worse. That's Cinnamon. Yeah. He's a lot down. Boy. Cinnamon's trying to hang mm. on. He's fighting with. Uh, that was another close one. <laughs> As uh, uh, Cinnamon is actually fighting with Raul uh, Mesa in there right now for the lucky dog. Yeah, uh, Mesa is actually, just the one up mind. this field about to be swallowed up by this pack. So Cinnamon's in a good spot, but he's causing some trouble because his car is not performing the way he wants to, and everyone in that yeah, pack is checking up behind him. Yeah, him and actually I'm seeing on the timing, Eric Zimmerman, uh, there's a few, it's Chris and Eric Zimmerman, the chance to fight it out right now for uh, Lucky Dog. Boy, this could get interesting though when Raul Meza comes into the mix, wants to catch him, catch up to him. Yeah, they're about to catch up to him as he sees them coming. I think he's getting the message to stay high or else. And that's Tony Smith and Casey Herring jumping up to the middle line to try to get some of that side draft off there as they start to lap the 37 of Raul Meza. And let's keep our eyes on him, see if everyone keeps it clean around him. Watch him on the exit. Yeah, they kept it clean. The 47 and the 3 are just... Woo yeah, Eric Zimmerman, he's trying to do everything he can to get ahead of Chris Cinnamon, just not working out right now. Yeah, uh, Casey Herring getting a great amount of draft. And we got Michael McKinnon, Nathan, Michael McKinnon, and the 21 Clinton Castleberry up there on that top lane. And those guys going to try to push their way up front. Castleberry's trying to find a way. He's had some, uh, he had a rough go at it earlier, but back up in the top five where he started. So he's looking to try to make ground as the nine's having to peel out over in the middle lane a little bit. They're trying to get some air on, on, the, on that grill because I dare to bet you that engine is starting to get a little hot. Now the engine's hot, but that drag that he has on that car is absolutely not helping him at all. And I think he knows that and McKinnon jumps up into second place. Yeah, McKinnon's got a nice clean car. The 21 of Clinton Castleberry's got a clean car as well. It's just they got they just need to start locking bumpers, trying to find a way to move up, maybe get some more stage points oh, out of it. Oh, the big checkup out of the win. corner. I'm not knowing what happened oh. to McKinnon, but everyone's just blocked up right there, and McKinnon's fallen down to fifth place. Boy, that's not good. Especially when he's falling back further, too, and he's losing even more. Well, it's a white flag for stage two, and it's McKinnon falling down, but it's Tony Smith up front in the 16. White flag for stage two. We saw what happened at the end of stage one. Are we going to see a repeat? 
So 39, uh oh, is up there at the top of the thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that was instinct. Oh boy. Well, everyone's making it very cleanly. Single file, at least back to fifth. <laughs> the 47 oh, just swapped ahead of the Chris Cinnamon in that Mountain Dew car and that orange McLaren Better Tomorrow car. Not sure, really sure McLaren makes trucks, but if they did, it would look like a Chevy. And the battle in front, here comes McKinney. He's got a great side draft run. Side by side out of the tribal, but no one can catch Tony Smith as he takes the stage two victory and hopefully we keep it green after the line. And we do. Which is, is good. There it is, there it is. Stage two is over. Tony Smith takes the stage two victory as everyone's backing it down right now and we have a clean that was our first entirely green flag stage covered here on Ooh. racecraft tv well, that was a, I, I think all the drivers kind of realized after the uh, stage one fiasco that they better not do that again <laughs> yeah but now it comes pit stops everyone has to go into the pits and then, how are you going to run the end of this race? And when are you going to go into the pits again to get to the end of this race? 40 laps remain here at Daytona. Who's going to have the right strategy to make it to the end? Yeah, strategy is going to be big, especially for a 40-lap race. So. But you never know. Those weird and wacky cautions could come out, especially now with it being the final, final stage of the race. Well, with the final stage lingering among us, it is getting into clutch mode as stage three comes up very soon for the Sneak Competition Design Truck Series Primary Jeep 200. We'll be right back after this short break. And we're back live here for the Sneak Competition Design uh, Truck Series Primary Jeep 200. And uh, a few cars didn't go into the pits. Um, one of them I was seeing was Dustin Str uh, Scruggs, mainly 64. 
Wow. So, yeah. before the coach came out, he went in to fits earlier than everyone else. Yeah, and poor 64 um, wasn't able to... I see it on the 64. I believe it's a different number. I don't know. Apologies. Because um, I took custom numbers off, but apparently they weren't. And so... I, Lorna might have been. It was TJ... Actually, yeah, we do have a 64. TJ Wood was trying to get his lap back. And unfortunately, with Scruggs not taking the... Uh, not going into the pits, Scruggs is having to fall back because he's a few laps down. So, really unfortunate there. TJ was hoping to at least get a wave around and had the really bad luck there, the leader not pitting. Well, that's a Scruggs. Very smart decision to, uh, well, he's going to roll the dice, actually. Everyone could go into the pits on lap 42. He stayed, he went into the pits on lap 39 to take the lead but he's going to be wasting a lot of fuel up there at the front and look how damaged that car is out the nose yeah and that's and that's the damage from uh earlier on too so he still has not used his fast repair unless unless he had terminal damage from that lap six incident um being caught up in that incident so very curious on what his uh he's strategy on another is. caution I think so too. These guys kept it very clean that time by. But can they keep it clean for 40 more laps as the pace truck is pulling off once more? And we're going back green for the Sneed Competition Design Truck Series Primary Jeep 200 here on Racecraft TV. What a start by Dustin. Yeah, just full on went, see you guys. I'm just going to run away with this. And well, here comes Michael McKenna. He's not waiting at all. Nope. He's going around the outside in that clean 13, and he's already got the lead by a car length, and he can uh, swoop down low on that back straight with ease and take the lead. Question will be, though, is you know, as he does, now the thing is for us, uh, 11 is going to be trying to fuel save as much as he can. I mean, it's going to be a question mark to see what he can do, but it can be done. And we saw this in the Cup Series where everyone was fuel saving for a while. They were all in a line uh, for the entire race, uh, for the for most of the final sector, where everyone's just fuel saving enough. They were just barely at the edge of fuel at the end of this race because of the two green white checkers. Are we going to see the same for these trucks? Just might. And yeah, at this, I mean, bound always bound to have one of those late race cautions coming out, and especially on the final laps. There, it's. It's game on, game on on the last few laps. These guys racing side by side down the Daytona super stretch. Tony Smith getting a great push from the, from the number uh, nine of Casey Herring up front and the stage two winner back there in the lead. But remember, fuel. Fuel going to be a big uh, a big thing there and I'm almost curious when we were talking about fast repairs earlier I wonder if that nine doesn't have any fast repairs left because especially since he still didn't get that uh, rear at that rear end fixed I wonder if he doesn't have any uh, doesn't have any fast repairs left yeah, I would have expected a few of these guys to try to get that damage repaired but do you lose a lot of time getting that uh damage repaired or it was just the iRacing crew saying yeah that, that's all we could do for you that could be it especially Ooh, with and diving mean, down I mean, low boy. Tony Smith cut it off the nose of Michael McKinnon and Michael McKinnon is going to be like alright I'll take that fuel safe yep. and watch uh, the 9 the 9 is dropping by far but here comes Michael McKinnon he doesn't want to be no one's uh, chauffeur he wants to be out there leading He's looking around the outside now. On the outside, trying to make an opportunity using the side draft and currently barely up front, but doesn't get a push at all from the nine. I believe the nine's probably gonna be saving you can see how far back the 11 is currently. These trucks just roar past our camera on the back straight. Oh, a little bit of squirrely and McKinnon swaps in front of him of Tony Smith. 
scrap and for the lead currently it's they just gotta watch it if they scrap it too much they're gonna really hurt themselves yeah McKinnon's got that very clean car but there's a few there's a car back there's a 93 of Tyler Daniels getting a bit loose and we saw him almost scrape the wall a few times so he might be having a little bit of control issues it's never good when you have control issues and that control is you could really end up hurting yourself in the long run as well. It's one little mistake and it's going to cost you big time. Yeah. But McKinnon staying low, getting a good push from Tony Smith. And he's staying really low. He's hugging that yellow line. And oh, what's happening right here? That was a little bit of a block as Casey Herring goes side by side and try and shout for the lead. That's Herring's a got a nice little clean car. Sorry, I didn't mean to jump in there. Oh, it's I'd... all right. It's all right. Yeah, Casey Herring. It's going to be interesting. He's got a clean front nose. And Herring is going to lead the lap. Now, it does, he has a very clean front nose. The back that end, eh, not, not, not the cleanest. It, it kind of resembles a magnet. No. Yeah. <laughs> trying to be very tedious on pushing him and I don't blame him one bit because push him one little spot wrong and with that Ooh, back end as crinkled as it is. Tony Smith keeps trying to go for a move and oh somebody's in the wall. That's not good. Was a, was a hit on the uh... Oh get a red flag. Oh, no 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 no. Big oh, right, the 11's involved, the 1's involved, and once again in turn 4, we got a massive crash. Oh, Tony Smith is involved. 20, 23 got involved in it. Oh, one massive damage. Looks like, oh, 91 got involved. 91 is smoking right now. Oh, jeez. So let's watch this again to see how it happened, and it was the 47 was the first car involved in there that McLaren and the and caution was the just caution finally now. was thrown and let's see oh it was Tony Smith who caused that one he got into the back end of the 47 who looked was coming down the track and well, a lot more cars made it through there I see Rhett Tucker make it through there very cleanly but wow Boy, that was uh, a mess. I mean, eleven. And Casey the Herring is in the lead with Michael McKinnon right behind. Boy, man, Casey Herring is probably thinking his lucky stars right now. Yeah, but he's got that damage. It's gonna be a very big fight off of pit row for these guys. And we see a few guys already heading into the pits. That is Stephen Thomas, and that that 23 car is absolutely destroyed. The 94 in there, he's stuck. But the 16 of Tony Smith, he was up there near the lead, but he was one of the most aggressive guys up there. And I think we saw that bite him in the butt right there with that just aggressiveness. And unfortunately, he got into a wreck, and bang, Hardy went. Yeah, that was just rough. Oh, you see 91. He's smoking a lot heading into the pits. He's just barely dragging that 91 into the pit lane. Also, Jonathan Munda, the 41, heads into the pits as well. Man, <laughs> those cautions, man. Just the way those wrecks happen, boy, it's, it's a mess. Well... Let's see what the leader is doing. The nine dives into the pit road. Late dive for him, but he's not confident in his pit, in his fuel, as Tyler Dittmer is coming in there with Clinton Castleberry, Taylor Peacock as well, and Derek Mullins heads into the pits, as well as Chip Turner's heading into the pits. Yeah, there's a few guys that are figuring they may might as well take their chances now, get some fresh tires. Full, fill it up with fuel. Casey Harry didn't repair his car at all. Casey Harry's going to win that wow. race off pit road. And uh, Clint Castleberry, I think he's going to try to repair that car as much as he can. Yeah, that's interesting that Casey Herring is not getting that back end fix. So oh, here comes Taylor Peacock. He's going to jump 
We're in Castleberry. Castleberry, I think he's, uh... Well, he did have a lot. There he goes. He was just waiting to finish his car repair. So, Quentin taking some repairs on his car, but that was very weird seeing Casey Herring not take any repairs on the car. There goes the 11 of Dust's Scruggs. This race has been up and down so far. And extremely crazy. Boy. Is that this is the second caution caused by a crash? Now I would say stage number two, the stage number one ending caution was caused by a crash other than the stage ending. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wanna say that, but it was really the stage ending caution, but you know it, it was yeah, at the it, line. We'll we'll say that it's at the line. So yeah, we don't it know. was right at the line and then it happened. <laughs> yeah, it's ugh. TJ Wood in pitch, Chip Turner, Tony Smith, Eric Zimmerman, all of those guys taking, uh, trying to get their uh, trucks repaired. Uh, Tony Smith's been in the pits now for 13 minutes. Eric Zimmerman's been in there for 12. Uh, Justin Lumpkin, unfortunately, has been in there for 30 plus minutes. He's his truck is pretty much done. They're having to put a whole new engine on it currently. Yeah, I think they're packing up and going to the next track already. I know some of these drivers are already in our chat just watching this race and they yeah, ain't happening. Keith, Keith Bradley. Bradley. Uh, yeah, Keith Bradley. I feel bad for him. Just uh, wrong place, wrong time, and then just, yeah. Well, I can tell you the person who's ha who's been in the right place, right time, uh, Michael McKinnon, the unlucky 13 car. Well, it's not unlucky for some. But look who's pulled this way back into third. Remember Rhett Tucker? Oh my goodness. Remember the helicopter on lap six? <laughs> He's back. Oh, I remember. Oh my goodness. He was that's... a lap down after that first caution. And he's crawled his way back into the lead lap. And oh back my goodness. That into is... third. Wow. Well then. The Sonic Adventure thing. Daytona. Yep. This will be interesting. Lights are out too, so we're gonna really see some uh, fireworks now. Yeah, the 93 is not, doesn't have a lot of people behind him as they're very far back, and I think he wants uh, that flaming hot Silverado back there. But it's green flag, back to racing we go here at Daytona, and it's. Michael McKinnon leading out Tyler Daniels, Rhett Tucker, Chris Cinnamon, and Steve Williams. Our top five for the Sneed Competition Design Truck Series Primary Jeep.com. 226 laps to go. Yeah, and 32 of Steve Williams had a terrible start. Now here goes Tyler Daniels finally down on the inside line as Rhett, Rhett Tucker is just pushing Michael McKinnon to the lead. Yeah, that was a good push oh by Rhett, and whoa, that is one destroyed car up there. I don't know who that is, but oh my goodness. I couldn't even tell what number the truck was. It was a GoPro car. I think that was TJ Wood. No, it was not. Oh, Martin. Nope. nope. Eric? He's way farther back whoa! now. My the 23. Oh. That is Eric's. That is Stephen Thomas. That was our pole suitor. Wow. And the 94 of Eric Zimmerman almost clobbers 23. I'm not sure uh, he saw that coming or my goodness. Wow. Okay. That got interesting. Well, so far up further up front, it's pretty clean as oh here we go michael mckinnon getting left out to dry as here goes tyler daniels to second and rhett tucker to back to the lead and rhett tucker is back on that middle lane again just oh never mind he's gonna get left out to dry as he comes back down on the middle onto the low lane right behind Ty michael Mc uh mckinnon They're drag racing down into turns one and two. What's more, 
Right. Tucker in the lead, being pushed by Michael McKinnon, Tyler Daniels, Steve Williams, Dustin Scruggs, and that 11. Your top five, and I must take a little time, and we need to appreciate what Dustin Scruggs is doing in that number 11 car. He had a lot of damage earlier on, and, well, he's falling back, but, oh, Scruggs almost turns Daniels. Oh, that was, oh, that was, gosh, I was holding my breath there. That was oh. close. Was very close as Scruggs once again close to the other cars. But the reason why I want to highlight Scruggs, he is the first one to go into the pits out of everyone. So if this becomes a fuel race to the end, Scruggs would have the advantage. Yeah, and Scruggs, with everything that he's doing right now, that is like the best opportunity is trying to work his work his fuel mileage calculator, hoping for the best. But we'll see, because boy, it could get real interesting. Nice and clean, two two by two. Woo! There we go. And Michael McKinnon got a little uh, somewhat sideways there as he went up to the middle lane, came right back down. Looked as if he was trying to make this decision, but couldn't make it up in time. Well, the 47 diving below the yellow line. Andrew Hurley looking very squirrely. Oh, that could have been a lot. Oh, worse. oh, oh, oh! Ooh. He's he's slowing up. He is unsure that he wants to be up there, but. 47 has dropped a lot. Yeah, he shouldn't. If he was going to drop off, he shouldn't have dropped off that quick, and that might have hurt him, though, too. He's way out of draft range now, possibly. He still has a little help, but... Eesh. Yeah, he's got a help there, but it's very unsure. As Rhett Tucker McKinnon... Up draft is still up the front. Yeah, a little bit of pushing and shoving, but so far everything clean. Nothing, nothing really bad so far. I not to jinx it though, because uh, we've seen worse. <laughs> so far, Michael McKinnon still pushing Rhett Tucker right now. As here goes the 91 of Nathan Rogue trying to get some help on that outside line. He's got 93 of Tyler Daniels and the 11 of Dustin Truggs just behind him, but. It's that high line is still unorganized, not getting the run they want to, where they can fight with Rhett, Rhett Tucker and Michael McKinnon. Yeah, Rhett Tucker, cleanest car out there, but McKinnon is giving him all that push that he needs. And McKinnon, if he stays buried in there, he's going to be saving a lot of fuel as we enter 20 laps to go this time by. 20 laps to go, the... The wick is going to start turning up even higher because uh, it's going to get more and more intense as laps start ticking by. Well, we never actually had 21 clean green flag laps so far in this race because of the stages, but, you know, last stage they did go green flag that entire time by, and then they had that crash early on in the start of stage three. So can they keep it green for 20 more laps here? But they're so tightly packed that they're squirming around. Down low and up high. And that is Nathan Rog in that 91. His engine was on fire at the end of that caution. He's back up to 30. He's going to dive down low. McKinnon's going to dive up high. McKinnon has just lost his spot up down low. But he's going for that spot up front with the 93 right behind him. And, oh no, the 32 just swapped oh, right geez. across the track and got collected. Steve Williams, oh, hard oh, hit into Tyler Daniels, who can't believe what just happened. The 32 just straight up. Oh man, he just, yeah, it went straight up right. I I think he was trying to make no, a move. And there's wasn't no room there. I don't know what he was looking for. Oh, there was goodness. There was nothing there for him. Yeah, oh, and then... They clipped Cinnamon. About three. Yeah, Cinnamon got hit. 93 hanging on to... He was okay until he turned there, and I believe... Well, actually, oh, no, he oh, saved no, it. No. Heck of a save, actually. Well, somebody turned on the Eurobeat. Wall. Somebody turned on the Eurobeat right there. <laughs> a little bit of a jump. I know you're a Rallycross guy, so you'll appreciate that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> 93 kept it, kept 
it out of the wall. Both those guys kept it out of the wall, but a little bit of body damage. But the 32, uh... Boy, uh, I, I think some fist fight might happen between, between him and uh, Tyler. Yeah. Well, at least on the bright side, the 32 had the wor got the worst out of it. Yeah. Well, as another caution comes out with less than 20 laps to go, we're going to go for a quick break, but we're going to be side by side so y'all don't miss any uh, pit lane action here on Racecraft TV. Can you see it? It's right there. Hidden behind an assortment of vibrant colors and corporate branding schemes. Look closer. Past the nearly 200 tons of handmade American steel. And beyond the highest quality, custom designed electrical components and systems in the industry. Deeper still, to the very core. That's where you'll find it. The heart of NRE. Heart is what makes us who we are. Heart is why NRE products and services are made with more. More precision. More grit, and more passion. We're the largest independent supplier of locomotives, parts, and components on the planet. Vertically integrated and strategically positioned for multiple domestic and international facilities. Our capacity and efficiency are simply unmatched. Fast and worth it and sealed with a calloused handshake. We design real solutions for real world challenges. Whether we're leading the charge on clean emission solutions or integrating the latest performance enhancing technology. And we are back live here on Racecraft TV for the Sydney Competition Design Truck Series Primary Jeep Cup 200. The pace truck is pulling off, and we're going back green. 16 laps to go in the first round of this beautiful truck series. 
Brett Tucker had an amazing start while oh for Kennan. Oh, that was smart by McKinnon. He saw no one was behind him, so he immediately dropped down to that bottom lane. He saw the gap opening right ahead of Dustin Scruggs, and that's the old one of Chip Turner just left out there all alone, and we got a massive line of cars right here. Yep, and, and we looks like Chip, oh, we got one taker right now. It's the iRacing car of the 20. Oh, here we go. Here comes, here comes McKinnon. Yeah, McKinnon making a run now. He's getting help from the 11 of Dustin Scruggs, who's used to fast repair, so he's got a nice clean truck now. Yeah, coming out of turn four, 15 laps remain. That's going to become 14 laps to go. We've seen how crazy it gets in the last few laps here in the NASRA. And especially if you go by the Cup Series race. Oh, my goodness. That was crazy. Two green-white checkers. Are we going to see a green flag finish or are we going to see some overtime happening here on Racecraft TV? We might see some overtime, I think. The way these guys are running. Oh, we're going to see some three wide action. As here we go now. Looking. Oh, he looked at going three wide. Now let's run on board the nose of Scrug. Because Scrug's right is dancing on the back end of McKinnon. He's looking feisty. And he, I think he wants. He wants that lead. He wants to be in the right place at the right time, but I say the right place would be right here. But Scruggs has more fuel than everybody else in this pack. The only two that went in on lap 42 are your two leaders of Tucker and McKinnon. Uh, not this rate right now. They've, I'm hoping they have enough fuel even with the caution, but it could be very close to still anyways at this point. And after this absolutely chaotic race, uh, just look at the standings of how many cars are on the lead lap is pretty insane. It is kind of like the, uh, we're trying to find out the cars who are actually battling out for the lead is trying to figure out who's actually in this pack. But if you look at the track map, uh, well, everyone in the field is packed into this pack. It's just the positioning is pretty crazy. Yeah, the positioning is what's making the difference. Yeah, and the positioning is what's making a big difference right now. And I mean, from first to sixteenth, put a blanket over it, and you're right now two second gap. And Steve Williams, the last car on the lead lap, and he's just over two seconds behind. So everyone's pretty close to each other currently. McKinnon, Michael McKinnon, barely pulling ahead, comes down. As he leaves the 11 of Dustin Scruggs out, Dustin Scruggs now has that lead on the top lane, and he's going to get some help from Ooh, the there is there. There is a lot of wall contact and a lot of sparks being popped up by the alien that one of Tyler Peacock. Yeah, that was pretty close. And his paint scheme, uh, he, he's, he's, he's wanting to have some money, but he's got to, he, he needs to work his way up there if he wants to get the big money finishing uh, finishing first here in the Daytona race. Well, he's rocking that Racecraft TV uh, sun strip, so I have to give some love to him. <laughs> yep. Boy, is this, they're starting to move around. I just see the McLaren car, McLaren truck of the 47 now jumping up to the outside. McKinnon still hanging on out of that low line as everyone is two by two, and 47 just slid up a little bit there on the high side. Michael McKinnon leading out and he's going up top to pick up the 11 of Dustin Scruggs and taking the lead is Rhett Tucker now. Well, that's an odd choice, but oh, contact. Taylor oh. Peacock gets struck hard into the back of the 01 of Chip Turner. Chip Turner's got a little bit of damage on that left on that left side now. He's been beaten and beaten and banged into uh, the second, this third and final stage, but Still running nice and clean as we still see a lot of shuffling further back as there goes McKinnon back to the inside lane. At up front, Scruggs battling for the lead. McKinnon in the lead now and Rhett Tucker buried into the back end of that 13. 
McKinnon's just getting a lot of push from Rhett Tucker, and McKinnon's trying to play this out, but it's going to be very close, too, especially seeing how these guys are really starting to get aggressive now, as we only have about eight laps to go this time. Getting ready to finish up lap 72 here. Coming down the back stretch. As they come back around to Ooh, that Scruggs! That Scruggs gets it to McKinnon! And no! No! Oh. Caution is out. Oh, man. Scruggs looked around the outside of McKinnon, and there is just no room right there. And three wide on the back straight takes out three cars. McKinnon, Scruggs, and the 93 of Tyler Daniels also involved. Poor Ty Tyler. Tyler is just getting that caught up in everything rough. tonight. Yeah. Oh, man, that was rough. And I, I think he already used his fast repair because he got caught up in the mess on lap six. Oh, man. Yeah, and the last caution was him getting turned around by another car. But up front, Rhett Tucker and Nathan Rogg and Clinton. Clinton Castleberry and Casey Herring with Derek Mullins, your top five. And with under 10 laps to go, the stakes are high here in Daytona here on Racecraft TV. Can you see it? It's right there. Hidden behind an assortment of vibrant colors and corporate branding schemes. Look closer. Past the nearly 200 tons of handmade American steel. And beyond the highest quality, custom designed electrical components and systems in the industry. Deeper still, to the very core. That's where you'll find it. The heart of NRE. Heart is what makes us who we are. Heart is why NRE products and services are made with more. More precision. More grit and more passion. We're the largest independent supplier of locomotives, parts, and components on the planet. Vertically integrated and strategically positioned for multiple domestic and international facilities. Our capacity and efficiency are simply unmatched. Fast and worth it and sealed with a calloused handshake. We design real solutions for real world challenges. Whether we're leading the charge on clean emission solutions or integrating the latest performance enhancing technology into virtually any locomotive platform, we quote to delivery and ship from stock to offer the most flexible and comprehensive work scope throughout our global reach. Our customers call it a return on investment. We call it the return of North American pride. Do you see it now? It's there. A raging fire that burns inside each and every designer, welder, engineer, and NRE team member. Heart is our anthem. Passion is our fuel. They drive us towards success, push us beyond boundaries, and they guide us to you. Heart is what moves us forward.
And we're back live here for the Sneak Competition Design Truck Series Primary Jeep.com 200 here on Racecraft TV at Daytona. And six laps to go. Hey, I, I, me being a Texan, I love the number five, you know, a five barrel gun. Five in the <laughs> chamber. We're going to have a five lap shootout. <laughs> going to be fun of I, I think my pick might be already out of the race i think I'm trying to remember who my pick was now because i was having a brain fart now uh yeah i'm trying to remember i think, who... I think it was who was second he started in second whoever was it that started in second when i was saying or actually no it might be right no nah, my, green my flag, green flag. Nah, no i don't think buzzing. it is but we're gonna find out who's gonna win this series Five laps to go here at Daytona for the Sneak Competition Design Truck Series Primary Jeep.com 200 here on Racecraft TV. Rhett Tucker takes a good jump. Nathan Rog right behind him, followed by Casey Herring, Clint Casimiro, Derek Mullins, and Chip Turner, your top six. And look at the two of Derek Mullins getting a good push to the nine. And the nine jumps up into the lead. Yeah, battle, I mean... That outside line all is them too, and they've got a whole bunch of d damage on the rear. They're going to need some extra help if they want to stay in front. Oh, here goes the Casey Herring on the inside line. Put him to the point. Yeah, Casey Herring taking up the lead, and he's getting a good push by Rhett Tucker. And there goes and Rhett Tucker again. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Rhett Tucker doesn't want any of that. He wants that clean air. Five laps to go. Let's make that four to go. And Casey Herring's fallen down, and he's getting passed by Chris Cinnamon. Boy, here we go. Three, he's got a little bit of, there's a few trucks with a little bit of rear damage from the bumping and shoving, but boy, might, this could get interesting here as uh, Brett Tucker's got a nice little line behind him, so we could see a four truck battle here. These guys in the back keep fighting around as here we go on the outside. There goes the two of Derek Mullins to the outside. We got three wide for third place currently. Yeah, and there goes three wide. Look at Casey Herring. He's going out wide. And it's three wide. And all oh, two gets a bump and into the wall. They go and it's a massive crash. Once again, coming out turn four. Oh, 21 in the, 21 in the, 21 in the clear. Oh, 21 cart truck got turned by the 47. He turned the 47. He saved it. The 21 saved wow. it right there, but it's a the big crash. Oh my goodness. Yeah, here's the replay between the 21 and the 47. They're banging, trying to get back on track, but the 21 actually saved it going through the grass. Oh boy, oh boy. What a save right there. <laughs> The wreck for the two, though. Oh, man. I, I saw someone go up in the air. I don't know who it was, but someone was up in the air. Yo, you barely, barely see it. I believe that might have been the 37. Someone got two wheels up on the up off the ground. I get 17. I just 17. barely saw it. It looked like 17. Brandon Bullock's already a few laps down. Alright, well, let's actually just go into the replay tool and, uh, See if it happens. And let's go from our blimp and oh, it was the 17 that got airborne. Big hit right there. He got he got uh, enough airtime there to be on the X Games for that. <laughs> <laughs> and boy, oh, that boy. is a smoking car. Um, that that's is a Hooters car. Uh, Hooterman. Man, I believe he still has a fast repair, too. So, here we go. We got two green-white checkers. The first one get ready to come up. Yeah, and some cars uh, looking worse, and some cars are looking better. But a car that we was looking very rough earlier on the race, he's up in second right now. It's Chris Cinnamon. <laughs> Which I must say, Boy. it's an amazing name. Yep, as there goes the 94 of Zimmerman getting his lucky dog. Three laps down, uh, hanging on to 15th place currently after all of the melee that has happened. So he's going to be the only truck right now 
two laps down after this, I believe. Boy, oh boy, this is going to get very interesting. So, Rhett Tucker, Chris Cinnamon, Nathan Rowe, Clinton, Castleberry. It's your top four. Tyler, Taylor Peacock hanging in there in fifth, so... And the names have been flip-flopping left and right with this race, and we're down to about 12 trucks. It looks like 14 trucks still on the lead lap, so oh, it's going to be going to be interesting. We've still got 12 truck contention, so a lot of things can happen. As, he, as right now, let's see, we've got Derek Mullins still in the pits. Looks like, looks like Mullins, Derek Mullins did that not have a crash in the parallel. Pits. Scruggs was up there and he was looking and very he, good. Yeah, I believe, and he used up his fast repair as well. So he's got term, some terminal damage. He's been in there for nine minutes now already. Yeah, he's done. Um, yeah, he's, oh man, really unfortunate there having a great run and then that one little mistake Oy, that's rough well the lights are out in the pace car and uh i say i say it's time to go a little bit of a racecraft tv overtime but we're still on the back stretch so we aren't going to give that hype right now <laughs> we actually got oh, cars yeah. stopped on the back straight. That's not a parking spot, bro. That is, uh, I That's believe the, uh, that is, uh, I seven. believe so. No, not the 37. Uh, whoever's sitting there, uh, blue truck. I believe it's the GoPro truck, one of the GoPro trucks. Um, seven. Could that be, dear, or the, yeah, 37. No, it couldn't be. Um. Well, it looks like it's gone now. Uh, I I think they just. That might have been. Spawned. That might have been. Um, oh, it might have been Stephen Thomas actually. Mm, I I think that was. I think, yeah, because the pace truck had a lot of damage. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if the he pace was truck is second, pulling no. off. Let's go green, white, checkered here at Daytona for the City Competition Design Truck Series PrimaryJeep.com 200 here on Racecraft TV at Daytona. And it's a great start from Rhett Tucker. 97 gets a good start as well behind him. And look at that. Taylor Peacock jumps up into third place. And the 21's joining the fight. And Chris Cinnamon gets his nose chopped off by Peacock. Yeah, and try Taylor Peacock trying to find his way up. Here and Rhett Tucker, Tucker with the Tucker. block. Boy, five truck race now, the way it's going, and there's going to be a lot of blocking by Rhett Tucker. Oh, here we go. Three, well, he looked like he was going to go three wide. Oh, they are going to go three wide. wide. Here comes Casey. Oh Casey Herring gets it inside of the 81. Casey Herring through the middle. He's holding around the outside. Side by side, they go for the lead. And they're beating and banging side by side. Coming out in turn four, heading into the tribal. White flag this time by... And Rhett Tucker has got the lead, but here we go. Casey Herring. Oh, Peacock is looking to make it three, but that's not the right call. You gotta get him a give the Casey Herring the push. You gotta get some kind of speed. Herring's got a good he run. Herring around the outside. Rhett Tucker defending oh. Herring. Herring goes into the wall. Tucker's slowing down. Three. And look at down. Taylor Peacock. Very, very fast. Oh. That McLaren car getting it to everybody. Oh, around goes the four and it's oh. to the wall we go. They're being a big, but it's still a race up front. Taylor Pink got right. Tucker side by side. They go. Casey Herring in the nine right in there. Chris Simmons as well. The 97 of, actually 91 of Nate Rog. They're still drag racing and down to the side straight. They go. Oh, it's going to be side by side. Three wide, three wide heading into the tribal. And it's being a big and into the wall. The L and oh. My goodness, split second decision. It's going to be Taylor Peacock wow, for I thought the win. Nathan Rogue almost stole the show. Had that wreck happened a little bit earlier, Nathan Rogue in the 91 would have stolen it.
Oh my goodness. Slow motion replay is showing the winner of this race being the 81 of Taylor Peacock. It's Mr. Money Man himself taking the win wow. right to the T here at Daytona. Oh my goodness. I mean, not, I, Nathan Rogue might have a reason. We might have a look back of that little finish because I think Nathan Rogue might have barely crossed the line ahead of Rex Tucker. I mean, oh my gosh, that was such a close finish. What a finish we just had here on Racecraft TV. One of the closest finishes I've ever seen. And we're going to bring up our timing tower for our unofficial results. As a, it is Taylor Peacock winning this race. Oh, Nathan by Rogue five did get second. Hundreds of a second. Wow. Wow. And th it, it's so close between Rogue and Tucker because Rogue finished five hundredths of a second, but Tucker. Two tenths of a second. Well, here's the thing on the iRacing timing, it's got here uh, Nathan Rogue in second by 43 thousandths of a second. Then you have uh, some Chris Cinnamon finishing in third by six hundredths of a second. And then you got Rhett, Rhett Tucker in fourth by seven hundredths of a second. I mean, my goodness. And Poor Rhett got caught up in that three wide. He went from second all the way down to fourth from that one little tap. And then you even look at um, Casey Herring. He finished fifth after all of that because he was the, pretty much the sandwich in the wall. Yeah. It, that's why I said uh, unofficial results because uh, <laughs> it was too close to call. Thankfully, we do have that uh, pause screen on a. Uh, what came back so let's go all the way back there and uh see what happened as we're just going to shuffle through our cameras and settle this for ourselves let's take a watch at this replay and uh show you our top five from this thankfully we have a camera just straight on the start finish line so here it is Casey Heron went into the wall. Tucker just held him down to that yellow line. And Rhett Tucker uh, just hits into Taylor, trying to bang him. And he turns Taylor. Taylor swoops off the track. And this is where it got crazy. They all go into the wall. And it's going to be Taylor Peacock, the 91 of Nathan Rogg, Rhett Tucker just ahead of Cinnamon, and Casey Heron are top five. Here at Daytona, and we're just gonna keep it on the screen. We're just gonna keep yeah. it on the screen as we head into our uh, interviews with our race winner, ladies and gentlemen, the Peacock Money Man himself, Taylor Peacock. How are you doing, man? Awesome! What a race! Can't well, what it. a race and what a finish! Uh, <laughs> Earlier on in lap six, you were involved in that uh, all-car incident, uh, except for two, maybe. Uh, after that, like, what was going through your head? I just, just tried to take it easy after that. I had to use up my one quick repair. Took it easy till the end there. When it's time to go, put the pedal down. Well, heading into that green-white checkered, you were up there and ready to go. Um, uh, what was, what was your strategy going into there? Try to take the lead as fast as possible. I just knew I had to get past the nine, nine. He's been the guy to beat. He won the Tuesday's race. He's been one hell of a driver on the restrictor plates. That's for sure. So it was good to race all them guys up there. Nice and clean. Well, you took the win just by a nose and a number mainly. Sure. You hit the wall too, but Hey, <laughs> Nothing's better than spraying that champagne here at Daytona. And before, what what's this your reaction going through your head right now? Just it was exciting, that's for sure. As one of the most exciting races I've been a part of. 
coming well, to the line like that. I didn't know I had won it until I had got the okay on the relative. Pretty intense. It, it was so close. We didn't really know who won this. Uh, we had to uh, stop it on our screen and do it ourselves because our timing screen had a little bit of a different result. But, yep, you took the win here at Daytona. And uh, before we let you go, anyone you want to thank? Yeah, definitely thanks to Michael for running the both leagues. He's doing a damn good job. And that's it. The, the drivers be ready for next week. And you, you guys as well. You guys are doing an awesome job broadcasting. All right. Thank you, Taylor. You have yourself a good night, and congrats on the win. And, Tyler, I believe you are standing – by with our second place driver yeah absolutely and uh boy that was uh a wild race as uh bringing them up now with uh the 91 of nathan rogue and uh boy that that last uh that last lap finish uh you almost almost won it there at the end yeah that was a bit crazy always is at daytona yeah, uh, just overall with the race, I mean, the last, the uh, lap six wreck, uh, having everyone involved. Just what was your strategy though after that wreck happened? What was your strategy trying trying to get yourself back up to the front after all the mess happened? Just stay in the gas. It's uh, I kept my quick repair till the end, and that big wreck. I don't know when it was, but towards the end, I got my quick repair, and then I haven't wrecked since. So I say I got lucky. Is all it is. Well, it worked out for you in the end. Just what was, did you, how much fuel, did you plan on having a uh, fuel or did you have to fuel save at all when originally when we went green that entire second stage? Because we were originally hearing that you guys were going to have to pit at one point before uh, one of their cautions came out. Yeah, I filled up at the last caution and I had four and a half gallons left at the end. So I was good. That's awesome. Well, worked out. Heck. Heck of a race again. Uh, just overall, heck of a run for you. I know you probably were looking at that uh, first place finish, but I know you'll take a second. Um, so, do you have any sponsors and stuff you want to shout out? Yeah, thanks, Malware Bites and Primary Jeep and Timeout Systems. Oh, awesome. Awesome race again, Nathan. Heck of a run for you, especially coming 23rd to 2nd. Uh, great run again for you. Um, Definitely wish you luck in next week's race as well, Nathan. Thank you, Tyler. That was our second place finisher, Nathan Rog. And now we have a little bit of a of of an argument on who was our third place finisher, but he did easy easy only one who actually showed up to the interview room. And so we'll just give unofficially third place to Chris Cinnamon. Chris, how is that race? What 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 does iRacing say your finish position was? Yeah, what a finish that was. Uh, right now I'm scored three according to iRacing, but uh, who knows? It was so close coming across the line. Yeah, it was very close for you, and uh, it, it it pretty much taken all the sound out of your voice. But wow, what a up and down race you've had today. Yeah, no doubt. I, I messed myself. I should have used my quick w repair on that first caution. I didn't realize how much damage I had. And I just struggled for speed all, all up until the end when I finally used it. Well, a third place uh, here at Daytona never seems to uh, well disappoint, especially in a crazy close finish between five cars and especially in the number three. How special is uh, this finish? Oh, it was great. Absolutely. Uh, definitely a first race of the season with the trucks here, and we're racing with a great group of guys here, and hopefully we put a good show on. It definitely was a great show. Before we let you go, anyone who want to thank? Just the guys putting this, uh, this show on, uh, Brady, Mike, uh, everyone who's involved. Uh, you guys are doing a hell of a job, and uh, can't wait for the next race. All right. Thank you, Chris. You have yourself a great night up there in Canada. And we're going to give it a Tyler for any closing thoughts. Uh, I mean, heck of a run for you, Chris. Uh, I definitely have to jump in on saying that. That was a heck of a run. Uh, I know you were probably shocked with finishing third. And, I mean, 
as, as what it says there. We still got to go through all the officials, but man, that was a heck of a run for you there. I know you probably panicked a little, but I mean, overall, you, everyone else, just awesome race. Uh, I mean, granted, the big one collected everyone at the start, but that that gave a lot more excitement, especially when some of the guys that were further back that I, I think felt like may not have had a shot, but boy, it, it, it was an awesome event you guys pulled. It was definitely a amazing race here at Daytona for the Sneed Competition Design Series Primary Jeep.com 200 here at Daytona International Speedway. What a way to start out a season here when the trucks and it just been absolutely amazing. Thank you, everybody who's joining us here on Racecraft TV. I've been joined by Tyler Vickery. I'm Austin Knight, and I hope y'all. Have a great and a fantastic night.